So I lift my hand, I lift my hand to give you glory, to give you glory. I lift my hand, I lift my hand to give you praise, to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. And I will praise your name. for you. You worship the King of glory. Lift up your voice. Lift up your song. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is good. Oh, and I'll praise you, Lord. Yes, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Even though they heard me, I'll praise you, Lord. Oh, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Yeah. And I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Yeah. And I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise really you, Lord. Really, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Yeah. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Give a praise. I'm ready to go. 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 I'm ready to
And I won't let nothing hold me back. Come on, y'all. Don't just sing it, believe it. No, I won't let nothing hold me back. Hey, come on. Hey, oh, I won't let nothing hold me. I won't let nothing hold me. You, Lord, I won't let the rocks cry out. I'll praise you, Jesus. I'll praise you. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, God. Oh, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. And I won't let nothing hold me back. Cause sometimes insecurities, oh, but I won't let nothing hold me back. They hold us back. What people, what you think people think of you, I won't let nothing hold me back. Because you have given us the fear of the Lord. Oh, I won't let, 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 I won't let no, I won't let nothing, hold nothing hold me back, no. Come on, sing that. I won't let nothing hold me. I won't let nothing hold me back. Because he's too good, y'all. Oh, I won't let nothing hold me back. I won't let nothing hold me back. I won't let nothing hold Y'all keep singing that. I won't let nothing hold me back. Oh, I won't let nothing hold me back. Then this, oh, sing that, y'all, and I will become, yeah, even more undignified than this. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I will become, yeah, yeah. and I'll be even more dignified. Oh, oh even more dignified. Even more dignified, I'll be yeah. even more undignified, undignified. Come on, hey, and I'll become, and I'll become even more undignified. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, and I'll be gone. Hey, because you've been so good. Jesus, you've been so good. I'll be gone. But this is not no cute church. I'll become more dignified. And I'll become even more. Yeah. 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 Come on. Let's dance before the Lord. Come on. Come on. Hey. Yeah. Come on, dance! Yeah! Oh! And I'll become, hey! And I'll be even 
That's the truth. Oh, Jesus, your God. Yes, he is. Come on, give me something, y'all. Oh, Jesus, your God. Yeah, y'all lift that up. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, I won't let the rocks cry. No, I won't let the rocks cry. Jesus, I won't let the rocks cry. No, 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 no. Hey, Jesus, your God, I won't let the I won't let go, I won't let go. Hey, Jesus, you got, Jesus, you got, Jesus, you got. I won't let the rocks cry. Something's happening in the spirit. Whoa. Hey. How great is our God? Isn't he worthy? Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, and all will sing how great. Oh, you will see in the land of the living how great is our God. Come on, lift that up. Let's worship him. Oh, how great, how great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great you are. Oh, we'll Jesus, you got, 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 Jesus, you got. No, I won't let the rocks cry. Cause he's too worth. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. Oh, break the chains, break the barrel, let the rocks cry. Break the barriers of worship. Yes, break the barriers of worship. Yes. Break the barriers of worship. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. Hey. I won't let the rocks cry. I won't let the rocks cry. Oh, yeah. I won't let the rocks cry. Hey. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. One last time. And I'll become even more undignified than this. How foolish is it? Oh, say worship an invisible God. And I become even more undignified than this. Nobody's judging you right now. Only the King of Kings, He loves you. Oh, and I'll become, and I'll become, oh, even more undignified than this war. And I. Even more, even more undignified than this. Jesus, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Lift up your worship. Lift up your worship. Lift up your, lift up your worship. <laughs> lift up your worship. Thank you. Lift up your worship. You owe him a praise because he's been so good. Lift up your praise because <laughs> I won't go. I won't let the rocks cry out. Mm. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry out. Just a kick right here. Just a kick. Yeah. Oh, no. I won't let the rocks cry out. Mm. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry out. Yeah. No, I won't let the rocks cry out. Oh, Shande de Ribi, I so cool, not a Ribi, I know. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. No, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. Oh, oh I'm going to pour out my praise. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. Oh, I'll be empty before you. I won't let the rocks cry. Hey, do y'all got it in you? Come on, come on. No, I won't let the rocks cry. Oh, I'm gonna let the rocks cry out. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry. Hey, oh, I won't let the rocks cry. Just the drums, now. Nah. There's freedom in his altar. I won't let the rocks cry out. Come on. Hey. Oh, I won't let the rocks cry out. I won't let the rocks cry out. I won't let the rocks cry out. Hallelujah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I saw in the spirit. I said, I saw in the spirit. I saw Jessica. I see you standing here in the spirit with like a big massive trombone around your body it was gold and it had a big big wide open horn and as you sung as you sung the heavens the heavens opened up and i saw the enemy the enemy fall fall and then i saw you i saw you daughter i saw you daughter with a, a big long a big long sword in your hand i mean it's longer than you are it's two times two times as long Hallelujah. And God is saying, your worship is a double-edged sword. I say, your worship is, your worship is a double-edged, a double-edged sword. I saw you, man of God. I saw you standing here. Your feet, hallelujah, had on sandals of fire, sandals of fire, flames of fire. Hallelujah. Alex, I hear the spirit of God. The spirit of God. Bring it down. I want you to hear this. We about to praise again, but I just, we about to level up in the anointing right now. Alex, what I saw, young man, young man, at, at where you at? Come here. What I saw, young man, I saw you as David in the field playing a harp, tending to the Lord's sheep. But what I saw is I saw the anointing oil flow, hallelujah, from the prophet's horn, and it hits you. And what happens is, David was singing the same songs that he sung when he was out in the field tending to the sheep when he was a nobody and he sang, sung the same songs when he was in the king's court. The only difference was the authority on his worship chain. 
I said the authority on this worship change. You'll get it in a minute. Hallelujah. I said the authority on this worship change. I said somebody's going to get it in a room. The authority on this worship change. See, when David, when David was just out in the field, bring it down. I'm teaching. When David was just out in the field, playing his harp and worshiping God, <laughs> that moved God's heart. Hallelujah. It was good worship. It was good worship. But what happens when you get in the kings of the court, hallelujah, the king's court, and you begin to lift up worship to the Lord? <laughs> it's a difference. It just doesn't move God's heart, but it, it moves, it moves your enemy. I said it moves, it moves your enemy. I said it moves, it moves your enemy. Come on. It said it moves. See some of y'all, hallelujah. Y'all looking at us like United Church. Who are these crazy people? You know what we're doing, hallelujah. We're breaking generational curses. Yep, yep. yep. I got family in the room. I said, I'm breaking general curses. Come on. I got family in the room. I said, I'm, I'm breaking generational curses. Are you? Come on. I'm, I'm breaking generational curses. Come on, mama. We're going to break some generational curses. I'm breaking generational curses. Rana ma satana come here. Ramanda. I'm breaking generational curses. Anointing, the anointing of God is on you to break generational curses. Ramanda ma satana. I'm breaking generational curses over my life. Yes, I'm breaking generational curses. Come on, lift that up. Yes, what are you doing Come in worship? On. I'm breaking generational curses. Come on, let's worship. Break it, break it, break, break it, break it. I'm breaking generational curses. I'm breaking, I'm breaking. I'm breaking generational curses. I'm breaking, I'm breaking. Oh, I'm breaking generational curses. Oh, hey, I'm breaking. I'm breaking, 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 yeah. I'm breaking generational curses. Hallelujah. I'm breaking generational curses. Y'all clap your hands like this. Break those chains. I'm breaking generational Breaking, breaking, breaking. Breaking, breaking, breaking. Because it will not pass me. No, it will not pass me. No, I'm breaking. Oh, hey. Yeah, we worship you. Yeah, we worship you. 
of the Lord. I don't know. See, I don't know who told you who told you that you cannot have fun and worship the Lord. Come on, come on. I don't know who told you that you cannot worship the Lord. Come on. We worship. We worship. We worship. Hey. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We go going crazy in the house of the Lord. We going crazy in the house of the Lord. We going crazy in the house of the Lord. We going crazy. We worship. We going crazy in the house of the Lord. We going crazy. We worship. We going crazy in the house of the Lord. We worship. We worship. We going crazy. We worship. We worship. Yeah. Hey. We worship. Yeah. We worship you. Jesus be exalted. Jesus be exalted. We worship you. Jesus be exalted. Jesus be exalted. We worship you. Jesus be exalted. Jesus be exalted. We worship you. Jesus be exalted. Jesus be exalted. We worship you. Be glorified. You are the. You are great and greatly to be praised. Your name is high. Be glorified. You are great. You are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, your name is high. Be glorified. Cause you are great and you are great and greatly to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, yeah. who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, his name. who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, yeah. who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. 
jumping around and I did not expect this when I came in here but it's okay we serve the God of the unexpected we serve the God of the unexpected you know what's gonna happen next we serve a God of we're so used to getting a rhythm and then we get the words and we stay right there for a minute we go we serve the God of the unexpected I will call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. We serve the God of the unexpected. We about to shake up the kingdom right now. We serve the God of the unexpected. I will call on the name of the Lord. We serve the God of the unexpected. Yes, we do. We serve the God of the unexpected. I will call on the name of the we serve the God of the unexpected. We serve the God of the unexpected. I will call on the name of the Lord. Right now, let's let's just look at him. Let's just look at him. Let's just look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Bring it down, bring it down. Nobody greater than you. 
God is in the room. God is here. We acknowledge your presence, Lord. Hey, we were singing earlier. We're not going to sing it again. But real quick, we were singing earlier. I will not let the rocks cry out in my place. And I just want us to honestly lift up a praise with your mouth. Few like quick 10 seconds. The drums is killing, but we're going to cut the drums and the bass and the piano just really quick because these guys have, wow, we're, we're, we're there. But listen, I just want y'all to open up your mouth and release that cry because I won't let the rocks cry out in my place, right? And in order not to do that, I really have to practice crying out to the Father. So just 10 seconds, 10 seconds. We're going to release and well before the Lord. Ten seconds. Y'all ready? If you ain't well yet, come on. Don't let the rocks cry out in your place. No music. Here we go. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will let the rocks cry out. Hallelujah. can come back in band and play softly but the Lord is so good and so great so good to us he's been so faithful I know we're in church we got to keep it moving because it's baptism Sunday and we're really excited about those that are getting baptized today but honey listen I just celebrated 10 years of wedding blissfulness a lot of good fun and a, a good time and uh, we did that yesterday. It was a blast. I have a lot of family um, that came from all sides of the, the nation to be here. And so we're so honored that they're here. Um, if you're part of my family, if y'all just wave your hands in the air real quick. This is some of my family. So y'all shout out for them. But yeah, Pastor Arthur, we love you. Yeah, look, my Uncle Chris in the house, super clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Arthur and I celebrated 10 years of, of marriage, and so we're excited for that. But um, we're, we're excited more so for what the Lord has done in our life. Um, and now that you guys get to be a part of that, we're excited about what the Lord is doing in United Church. And so uh, welcome to United Church. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, but welcome to United Church. We love you. Uh, I'm Jaleesa Lady G, and I also want to shout out our U-Crew really quick. U-Crew, you in the house? U-Crew? That's what's up. So, y'all, everything that you see that has happened here, um, our U-Crew uh, puts it together. And so it's been a long weekend, and we appreciate you guys so much. Um, but I think we have announcements. Announcements? Look, I'm a little messed up. Jessica, you are singing. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord, everybody. It's so good to see so many people this morning. Um, so we just want to first start off with our U Crew meetup, which is going to be August 22nd. So we'll have a meeting, then we'll also go and have a good time fellowshipping together. So if you're in the U Crew, please join us there. Next, uh, the U Crew Grow Spiritual Maturity is next Sunday. So. If you're in that class, that session will be held next Sunday. I believe it is at 9 a.m. or 9 a.m. We'll see you there. And there is coffee and donuts, just in case you're hungry. Um, we have prayer here at United Church um, Sunday mornings, and we also have them Tuesday nights on Zoom. So meet us there. Pastor said a lot happens during prayer. So see us Sundays at 1030 and Tuesdays at 930 p.m. Also, this week we are fasting as a church. Yes, we are prayer and fasting because we know that some things only come by prayer and fasting. Okay, starting this Monday until Wednesday, August 2nd and through the 4th, um, it's corporate prayer on Zoom at 9 p.m. Um, prayer points will be sent out via mass text this evening, what we will be praying for um, during our fast. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, great, wonderful. Uh, next, <laughs> and our first time guest, if you're a first time guest, just wave at us. Hello, hi everybody, our first time guest. Welcome to the family. Um, Pastor Arthur and First Lady Jalisa would like to meet you and greet you back at our after party right after church. So if you could please text this number 404-800-7402 to stay connected with United. But there is an after party where they will greet and meet you. Amen. Are y'all ready to give? Yes, amen. Amen. God is so faithful, y'all. Mm. I won't let the rocks cry out. <laughs> That's an anointed worship time together. Amen. Welcome to United Church. I'm so honored to be here. I'm a little sweaty and drunk in the spirit. Is that okay? Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time. This is a time where we can serve God and worship God in our giving. So I want to encourage you to prepare an offering unto the Lord. I don't even like to say donation. You're not making no donation to the kingdom of God. What is that? A donation? <laughs> we receive your tax deductible donation. No, you are investing into the kingdom of heaven. In fact, everything you own is God's. It's his 100%. He just simply asked for a tenth or a tithe of it back. And so this is the opportunity you have in our spiritual family to give back to God what he's given you to steward. The scripture that says, well done, good and faithful servant. That scripture is talking about your financial stewardship. Did you know about that? Jesus used that in a parable where he's talking about financial stewardship. So may the Lord say that to you on that day when you meet him. Well done, good and faithful servant. And one way you can be faithful is through your giving. So you can give three different ways. Cash app, you can send there. Uh, you can give online at our website, or you can swipe your card, which uh, we have in the back there, a square device you can give to the Lord that way. But uh, with, at United, or, or you can also, the fourth way is right here in the bucket. We have some beautiful church mothers. Y'all clap it up for our church mothers. Hallelujah. I will give a big shout out to Miss Broxton. She threw down for us last night. The food was excellent. And family, everybody, all oh, y'all, Miss Brooks, yeah, come on. Look, Miss Brooks want her credit. Y'all better, that pasta was off the chain. And that salmon, was that you? My God, that salmon was off the chain. Amen. The meatballs and everything. Amen. Sister Annie, meatball. Okay, y'all just give me the whole menu and tell me who did what. So I don't, I don't want nobody else said I missed something. Okay. But everything good. Everything was good. Even the air condition was good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm joking. If y'all been here for the last two weeks, y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, hey, let's give to the Lord. Uh, let's let's do this at our at our church. If you're a guest visiting, you do know that we. Uh, I want you to know that we do something uh, in our service where we do a giving declaration. So let's stand together as a spiritual family. And declare this not out of religion or obligation, but really it's just it's a prayer unto the Lord. And it's a declaration over our gift because what you're giving is a gift as unto the Lord to worship him and to express your love to him. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's say it together, y'all. Let's say it strong. Ready? Let's go. I present my tithe to the Lord as an act of obedience and gratitude. Every penny I have is a gift from Father God. As a disciple of Christ, I make a covenant to steward my finances according to Scripture and be led by the Holy Spirit. I present my financial love offering as a demonstration of my affection toward Christ. I will rebuke financial struggle and financial distress. God has not called me to live in the prison of debt or poverty. Spend in all my spending, saving, charitable giving, and investments. God's grace sustains me to be a generous giver. Amen. Let's clap it up for Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Let's receive our offering through Square, through online, through card, or in the bucket. Amen.
Lord, we bless the gifts. Lord, we bless the gifts and we bless the givers. God, multiply our gifts, our, our seed that has been sown. God, may it cause us to have breakthrough in our financial lives, God. God, I declare promotion. I declare prosperity and provision over your people, God. I declare that you are their shepherd and they shall not lack for any, any good thing, God, any good thing. I just feel like that in the room, somebody needs to hear that this morning. The Lord is your shepherd and that you shall lack for no good thing. The Lord says he's got you in the palm of his hand. In fact, I see in the spirit, hallelujah, I see in the spirit, the Lord just holding bread in his hand. And I see you as a lamb just coming up, taking that bread out of the palm. The Lord is going to feed you divinely, divine provision, divine provision. I declare that over your life in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Well, we have a, a something special that we want to do today. Uh, and so what I want to invite is up Pastor Carl Mayberry. Uh, and he's going to come up and we're going to make a special presentation uh, for the life of our ministry and our church. This is our first time doing this, actually. And so this is very uh, this is our uh, an inaugural uh, presentation that we're going to do. And so, Pastor Carl, if I could, if I have Lady G come stand with us, Pastor Carl is going to lead us in this. Uh, and uh, this is going to be wonderful. Amen. Pastor Carl. Amen. Uh Good afternoon, I guess, at this point. Um, just want to bless the Lord. So what we have happening today is our You Grow uh, class kicked off, and we trained some leaders to participate in that, and they have done phenomenal jobs. And also in that time, we've had some people actually who joined the church have gone through that You Grow three-week process, and they are graduating today. Woo! Yeah. So before I, I stand them up and have them come up here, I just want to talk a little bit about our leaders, and I promise I'll be very, very brief. Uh, they gave up uh, three weeks, even more than that, of their time to be trained, uh, to come in early, to go through scripture, to go through the material, and sacrificed early in the morning, 8, 8.30 they were here, and they really drilled and asked great questions, and they were really hungry for it. And they've just made so many sacrifices to be a part of that. And I just want to honor them and thank them for that. Uh, without them, we really would not have this ministry operating right now in our church. And it is so pivotal because of all the growth that we're experiencing. Um, so many people are asking questions about how do I get involved? And so going through you grow is just a, a, is our doorway into ministry here at United. So thank you guys for all of just that hard work of waking up early, driving in, you know, sitting with me, going through that stuff. And then we had folks who joined the church and came through. And that was just awesome, you know. They came and they wanted to join. They said, how can we be a part? And they came to you, girl, and they sacrificed, y'all. You know, how many of y'all know waking up at 8 to get here at 9 is not easy, you know, on a Sunday, you know. We do stuff on Saturday. It's summertime in Georgia. It's hot. We want to be out. And so they made that time, made that effort, and they put in all that, and they came in. And so... We want to celebrate them. So if I could have all of the you grow graduates, you know who you are. If you could just stand right where you are. Yes, put the hat on. Put the hat on. <laughs> it's, it's Velcro. Is it big enough? <laughs> Good. Hey, Amen. There you go. And come, I want to invite you all up here with me on stage. Could you please come up? Come on. Amen. Thank you. 
All right. Okay, so we want to start with the teachers and facilitators. These are the folks that, uh, church family, when you guys are coming in here for you grow, they will be leading us and they will be teaching us uh, and helping us. So, uh, Miss Mother Geneva Broxton. Let me, <laughs> let me read this. It says, Woo! Certificate of Completion. This is to certify that Geneva Broxton has successfully completed the training of you grow teachers and moderators and signed by myself and Pastor Arthur. Woo! Let's move to the middle here, y'all. This is our first one, okay? So right, right. Give bear, us bear with us. We're trying to figure this out. Come on, Brother Carl. Come on, Lady G. Oh, these are pictures? Okay. Hallelujah. We're figuring it out. Back in line, amen. Put your hat back on, mother. Amen. Varian Harris. Woo! <laughs> Come on, Doc. Come on, Come on Pastor. We're going to get a picture of each one. Are we taking it? Okay. <laughs> we doing this every time. All right. Miss Yvonne Giles. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, Miss Annie Madison. Woo! Mr. Willie Marston. My God. Big man. That's it. Yeah. Officer. <laughs> Ms. Jessica Milner. Teacher, not just a teacher of high school students, teacher of the word. Miss Shafawu Andunsi. She also just got a promotion as an officer with the CDC, which is a big deal. Really big deal. And now these are our you grow members that have completed the actual Yugo class. So this is to say, this is to proudly certify that Miss Tasha Brooks has successfully com I'm sorry, Cornelia Brooks has successfully completed the Yugo training. We'll fix this. Yeah, we'll <laughs> fix it. We'll fix it. <laughs> this is our neighbor, y'all. She lives next door to us. And then Miss Kennedy Edwards. Amen. Amen. I want you to stretch your hand toward the stage. Father, in the name of Jesus, y'all grab hands or touch elbows or whatever you feel comfortable doing. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your servants, God. For those whom participated in the discipleship program, those who submitted themselves to the process of discipleship here at United Church so that they could have a strong foundation in their Christian faith. We as a spiritual family, we bless them. We bless them with the, the blessing of God Almighty, Lord. Father, we thank you for them. We thank you for those who have submitted themselves as servants of the word to teach the word in the discipleship ministry, God. Father, that they will teach the word with integrity. God, that they will teach the word as those who are prepared, God. Father, that they are ready in season and out of season, God. Father, we thank you that they don't just have knowledge, but they would have knowledge on fire. Hallelujah, that they would have knowledge endowed by the Holy Spirit. That they wouldn't just have head knowledge that puffeth up and make proud. But God, that they would teach the word as, 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 as with like a surgeon, God. That they would to rightly divide the word of God of truth with excellence and integrity, God. We commission these facilitators and teachers, God to disciple your people in this city, in this region, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's put your hands together, amen. Y'all can go back to your seat, and you can, uh, you can go back to your seat, and praise God. We're going to get ready for the word here. We're doing good on timing, hallelujah. We will be baptizing. Uh, three young ladies here in a couple minutes right outside on the front lawn of the church for the whole world to see. Amen. Praise God. And so before we do that, we're going to break this word open. Hallelujah. Anybody hungry for a word today? Anybody want Jesus to speak a word to us today as a spiritual family? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this word. Today we are starting a new teaching series, hallelujah, on protecting holy ground. Protecting holy ground. And what I want us to do is I want us to turn in our Bible to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 is where we're going to start. Amen. Luke chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. Lord, I thank you for the ministry of the word. Holy Spirit, you, work, you wrote the Bible. God, you wrote the Bible. Inspired by you through men. Men who committed themselves to following you, to leaving everything to follow you to take up their cross. Some of them were martyred and died, bled for the cause of Christ. And so, Father, we crack open this holy writ right now. And Father, we commit ourselves to your teaching. Jesus, you said, if you know the truth, my truth, and apply it, the truth shall set you free. God, we declare that this word is the word of truth and the word of freedom. It's not just a religious book, but it's the, the, the word of truth and the word of freedom. So God, teach us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're talking today about protecting holy ground, specifically we're going to jump into the area of deliverance and inner healing. The ministry of deliverance and inner healing. And so for the next 15 weeks, we are going to dive deeper. And we're going to stretch our theology, stretch our belief system, our processes of what we know, who we know God is, and what we know God is capable of doing in our own personal life, in our family's life, uh, in the world around us, we are going to stretch ourselves. Many of you are going to learn things about God, about yourself, about your enemy that you didn't know before. 
The scripture tells us to not be ignorant of our enemies' plans or schemes, to not be ignorant. And so the purpose of this teaching series is for us to dive deeper into the ministry of Jesus, which is deliverance ministry. The ministry of Jesus, like not just who Jesus is, but what Jesus came to do. And watch this, what he is doing now. Hallelujah. He's actively doing this thing called deliverance in you and in me. Hallelujah. So I've asked you to turn to Luke chapter 4, but I want to set up Luke chapter 4, verse 18. I want to set this up so you understand the context of which what we're in today. Before we do that, I want to shout out my mother, Monica Breland is here. Y'all clap it up. Hallelujah. My Aunt Linda from Texas is here as well. And my beautiful niece, Kaden Breland, is here. Hallelujah. And she'll be getting baptized here shortly. Hallelujah. And Jaleesa, I'm going to have you help dismiss the service. And you're going to shout out all your family because I don't want to miss nobody now. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't want to get in trouble. So I did my few. Oh, oh, wait a minute. And I got my, my childhood best friend. We grew up together. He, he lived three houses down from me in Fort Worth, Texas, on, on, on the south side of Fort Worth. Y'all don't know about the south side. But the south side, hey, of Fort Worth, where we hit them seas, baby. Now, let me, let me not go. Let me hear. <laughs> I'm like, see what? No, let me, let me not. Let me not. Let me, I'm about to teach the word. Let me not. My best friend, Darrell Colley, and his beautiful wife are here. Y'all clap it up for him and Kelly. Flew all the way from Texas. Love y'all. Let me set up Luke chapter 4 for us. So what happens is we see in Luke, in the book of Luke, we see Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan. Jesus was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And in that moment, we see the heavens open up And we see a voice call out from the open heaven and a dove descend from the clouds, a white dove, and land on the shoulder of Jesus. And the scripture says that the voice from the heavens cried out and said, this Jesus is my son in whom I am well pleased. We see a supernatural affirmation of Jesus and who he is uh, at the baptismal service of Jesus. And what's interesting is what happens next. Right after Jesus, I mean, he was still wet from the water from the river. While he just came out and heard this beautiful affirmation from his heavenly father, all of the people around actually heard it. It was an audible voice. He goes by the spirit of God, the scripture says, by the spirit of God, full of the spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Not into a promotion, not into people liking him more, not into having more followers or whatever. But he was led into, the Bible says, the wilderness. I mean, he just got baptized. I mean, this was like a high moment for him. You know, like, man, this is a mountaintop. And he literally is escorted by Holy Spirit into the wilderness on a fast for 40 days. He said, okay, now you're going to fast for 40 days. And you're going into the wilderness for 40 days. And watch this. And this is the place where he is tempted and pressed by his enemy, Satan. He is tempted three times in three different areas The lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. He's hard-pressed and tempted by his enemy. What happens is Jesus combats his enemy with the word. Hallelujah. One of your greatest weapons in warfare against your enemy, spiritual wickedness, is the word. That's lesson number one. Hallelujah. That ain't even in my notes. If you want to know how to overcome your enemy and do warfare in the spirit, you got to know the word. 
You got to quote the word. Hallelujah. Listen, your cute little slogans on your t-shirts ain't going to help you. You got to quote the word, baby. And so Jesus overcame his enemy by the word of the Lord. So this happens. He gets baptized. He gets led out into the wilderness, tempted for 40 days. And this is what happens in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He comes out of the blazing hot wilderness after being tempted and tried. And he goes into, directly into the Jewish synagogue. And he takes the platform where they have an open scroll. And he walks up to the platform just like this. And people are there praying and worshiping. And he grabs the scroll and he opens the scroll and he says these words. Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's what we're going to talk about in the next 15. Those whom are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor to those who are oppressed. Liberty to those who are captive. Recovery of sight to those who are blind. And to set liberty those who are captive. What I want to talk about today is the fact and the point that Jesus, it is the will of Jesus, it is the will of God that you be saved, healed, and delivered. Saved, healed, and delivered. Say it with me. Say, healed, and delivered. The ministry of Jesus, or let me say it like this in a modern term, the administration of Jesus on earth didn't just happen 2,000 years ago. It didn't just happen 2,000 years ago and then end. You see, our God, our Savior, our Lord is not the President of the United States. Jesus didn't just have a three and a half year term and then it was over. His administration didn't end. His ministry to you did not end. His, 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 he's not just a picture on the wall and amongst other presidents and world leaders and religious leaders. Jesus' ministry happened. It was inaugurated 2,000 years ago when he stepped on the platform and said, this is my mission statement. The spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. To proclaim liberty to the captive. Recovery of sight to the blind. To set liberty those who are oppressed. It didn't end then. It, it's actually still going. <laughs> it's, his administration is still alive and active by his spirit on the earth. So what is the ministry of Jesus? What is the ministry of Jesus? Why did Jesus come to earth? What, 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 what is Jesus actually currently doing right now? What is he doing? Well, Jesus himself said this. That he, he outlined his ministry in one sentence. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, he said this. He said, the son of man came to seek and saved the lost. That's what he came to do. That's what he's actually actively doing right now. Jesus is alive and well, and by his spirit, he is seeking and saving that which is lost. So let's do a little word study here. The Greek word there for save, where Jesus said, I came to seek and save. Save the lost. That word, that Greek word, somebody say sozo. Sozo. That's the Greek word used there. Sozo. That same Greek word is used well over a hundred times throughout the New Testament. Sozo. And that beautiful word, it just doesn't mean, as it says in that text, sal to save or salvation. That, that word, is it's, it's actually a, a three-dimensional word. Uh, word. It's actually 
three uh, has a three supernatural applications for the believer. It's not just salvation, uh, but it's also healing. Sozo is healing, but it's not just healing, but it's it's also deliverance. This is the ministry of Jesus. He came to save, heal, and deliver. Hallelujah. To save, heal, and deliver. It's a it's a it's three applications. And let me go deeper into what are those three applications. The first one, salvation. The first application is salvation. It says this, it says to save from the penalty of sin, which is death. Let me just stop right there. Every last one of us, if you're under the sound of my voice, if you're watching online, every last one of us, the Bible says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Or watch this, the standard, the holy standard of God. You and I have failed to keep that standard. Therefore, the wages, the Bible says in Romans, the wages, or watch this, the payment, Quetea, the payment for sin is death. You, you, you have a payment coming as a sinner. And the payment of sin is death. The wrath of God, we, we, we are owed the wrath of God because of our failure and our rebellion against God's holy and righteous commands. But what's beautiful about Jesus is he doesn't stop there and say, I condemn you to the wrath of God. It says this, it it extends grace and mercy to those whom deserve the wrath of God. Oh, Jesus. In worship today, as we were worshiping, hallelujah, I have to hit a hit a, a, a lap. We can't do a whole lap around here because it ain't we ain't big enough, but I, I had to do a half a lap right here, hallelujah. Because I was just thinking in worship as we sung, I won't let the rocks cry out. I was thinking about the fact that my best friend Darrell is here on the front row. And see, some of y'all, y'all don't really know Pastor Arthur how he used to be. But somebody in the room this morning that know how I used to be. Hallelujah, he knew me before Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, he knew when I was in the club. Y'all think I, y'all think I worship crazy now. I was in the club doing the same thing, worshiping a different God. He laughing because he know. They used to laugh, they used to make fun of me. They'd be like, man, you be too live in the club, bro. Calm down, you sweating too much. That's why I can't come in here and just give Jesus a little. Because I know how, Aunt Wanda, I know how I was dancing. I know how I was dancing when I was in sin. Hallelujah. I I refuse to give the devil more glory. Hallelujah. Now that I'm saved, hallelujah, and grace and mercy have been extended to me. And I don't have to spend eternity in damnation and hellfire. I have came to seek and save. That which is lost. Extend mercy and grace to those who are deserving of the penalty of sin. Yes, you are. You have lied. You have stolen. You have cheated. You have used God's name in vain. Therefore, you are in need of a Savior. I don't care who I got to tell it to. I stood on college campuses and looked at people, professors who are atheists and looked them in the eye and said, Brother, you need to repent and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Your science, or let me say it like this, your practices of science can save you on the day of judgment. Only the blood of Jesus can save you. Cry out now while you still have time. The first application is salvation from the wrath of God mercy extended to you the second application of sozo is it ministers healing to those who are sick in body and mind it ministers heal. sozo sozo salvation sozo in this this context it ministers healing to those who are sick in body and mind if you are sick in your body hallelujah 
There's an app for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not WebMD. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the nurses and the doctors. We bless them in Jesus' name. But I know the great physician, hallelujah, that healed my body, hallelujah, when I was laying in the bed for 12 days in the hospital, sick with COVID-19, and they didn't have a cure, and they just trying to figure it out, stuffing 30 pills down my throat a day on four liters of oxygen a day. I had a family and a church family and people praying for Sozo to break through the healing power of God to resurrect my body from their hospital bed. I know what me what it means to have Sozo in my life. Come on, Jesus. I say I know what it means to have Sozo in my body. Hallelujah. I look out over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And I see people who, who've been healed of cancer in their body. Hallelujah. I declare over your body right now, if you're watching, I declare healing over your body right now. It says he healed all of their diseases. All of them, it said. All of them. And you say, preacher, well, what if God don't heal them? Look. If they saved, come to the, they've come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If they pass from this life into eternity, Jesus healed them. Hey, I said, Mantra is on the other side and she's healed, my sister. She's healed. She's whole. She's standing, her daughter, Raman Diabasa. She's standing in the presence of God, healed and whole. Whether he heal me in this life or the next, I got sozo, baby. I got sozo, baby. Hallelujah. Healing in your body and in your mind. Do you know? Do you know that Jesus died for your mental health? Oh, yeah, okay. I said Jesus died so that you can have mental health. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God just to prophesy right now. Kelly, I don't want to embarrass you. Stand up. Stand with her. I just declare over you, Kelly, you work, she works in mental health. I just declare over you, Kelly. Stand up, Daryl. Stand, yeah, put your hand on your wife. I declare over your life, Kelly, the Spirit of God showed me this yesterday, and I've been holding on to this word. The Lord is showing me that he's about to elevate you in the area of mental health. That God is about to transition you just from textbook theory, counseling, to an anointing. That you're about to be ministering to clients under an anointing. A fresh anointing to break yokes, bondages that people have dealt with in their families, in their bloodlines, strongholds in their families. God is going to cause you to minister under an anointing. Hallelujah. Through Zoom. Hallelujah. Through in-person counseling, he's going to cause you to break and destroy yours. Hallelujah. I even see a greater level of, of confidence coming to you. A greater level of confidence to minister. I, I even declare the people that work for you at the company, that work with you at the company, the, your bosses are going to be like, wow. How has your client had so much progress in what they've done? And you're going to say, man, look. I'm using, I'm using the theory of psychology and stuff like that, but it's Jesus, baby. It's Jesus that's breaking the yoke. It's Jesus that's lifting the heavy burden. Jesus said, come to me all who weary are who, and who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You just tell them, I'm just ministering rest to them in their mental, in their mental health. I'm ministering rest to them. It's sozo. Hallelujah. I bless you in the name of the Lord, Kelly. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you also work in mental health, you can take that word too. I say you can take that word too. Hallelujah. Jesus died for your mental health, fam. Jesus didn't die so we all got to walk around here jacked up and, whew, Jesus. He died so we could have peace of mind. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for therapists. I said, thank God for therapists. Thank God for therapists. 
Do you understand? I'm going to say this because I feel anointed to say this. Do you understand that God anoints people to heal others? That we God has anointed doctors and nurses to minister medicine to us. And God also gives us people who are anointed to minister to our mental health. So if you need to see an anointed therapist, an anointed counselor, go do it. Pastor Arthur got one. I said Pastor Arthur got one. He good too. He good. He anointed boy. He be ministering to me. He be ministering to me. Hallelujah. I've sent him two other pastors. Hallelujah. He said, man, you just sending all of your pastor friends. I say, I know we all messed up. We need help, brother. <laughs> Dealing with church folk. God, oh, thank you. Nice and cold. We need help, brother. Hallelujah. Sozo ministers healing to our physical health and our mental health. The second application of Sozo, that word save, where he says, I came to seek and save. That third application is deliver, deliverance. It means it delivers you from demonic strongholds in your mind, the works of Satan in your personal life, and the oppression and spiritual harassment from the kingdom of darkness. Yes, yes, yeah. Some, some, some of us are being harassed by the kingdom of darkness. Some of us are being harassed. Well, they asked a question in Bible college, and I was one of them. Well, professor, you know, we talk in theology. Professor, biblically, those who have been saved, can we be possessed by a demon? Biblically, can we be possessed by, I don't see evidence of that. Professor, can you show me, can a Christian be possessed by a demon? Well, okay. I think I understand that question. I understood that question when I asked it to my professors in seminary and Bible college. I understood what I was saying or meant to say and the heart of what I was trying to say. But the bigger question is, can a Christian be oppressed by a devil? Oppressed by a demon. Oppressed by spiritual wickedness. Because watch this. At the end of the day, do, which, which, what do you prefer to be stabbed or shot? Do you, just, do you prefer to be oppressed or possessed by a demon? Which one you want? I know for me, I don't want either one. I don't, even, I don't want neither one. I, you can throw the gun and the knife away. I don't want to be possessed or oppressed. So I don't know. I don't know biblically in scripture if I can allow as a born again believer who has the spirit of God dwelling in me. I don't know if I can allow myself to be fully possessed by a demon. I don't necessarily see that in the Bible. But I do see in scripture that born again Christians who are filled with the spirit of God can be oppressed and harassed by demonic forces and principalities and powers. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. You can. And if you allow it to get bad enough, if you allow it to get bad enough, you can open yourself up to walk away from your salvation. I don't want to get, get deep into soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. I don't want to go there uh, and confuse any of us, but if it gets bad enough, you can open yourself up to walk away from Jesus who saves you. And you come out from the covering of the blood of the Lamb. And you get to a place where you do open, full-blown, wide open. Come on in, strong man. You open yourself up to... Be possessed. And so the ministry, Sozo, the third application, talking about deliverance, to be delivered from demonic strongholds in your mind, from the works of Satan in your personal life, and the oppression and the spiritual harassment from 
the kingdom of darkness. The ministry of Jesus is actively, watch this, saving us. It's actively healing us. Right now it is. And it's actively delivering us if we allow him to do it. And so that's why in Luke chapter 4, we're just reading the Bible, hallelujah. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus said, "The spirit." this illustrates the three-dimensional supernatural salvation that we have access to. I'm going to say that the three-dimensional supernatural salvation that we have access to. A lot of times we teach in church we teach a salvation that only saved us from hell. And that is a limited knowledge of salvation. Jesus didn't just die so that you can be saved from hell and live on this earth broke, busted, and disgusted. That ain't salvation. I don't know what. That's, that's hell. That's in fire insurance. I don't know what that is. But he said, I have come to give you life. And life what? More abundantly, abundant life, abundant life. Sozo, hallelujah. To be saved, healed, and delivered. We got to hurry up. We got to baptize some people. Hallelujah. So that's why Luke chapter 4 verse 18, it beautifully illustrates to those, it says, good news to the poor. It says to proclaim liberty to those who are captive. I mean, really, captive. Those who are in spiritual bondage. It says to, 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 to give sight to the blind, physically as well as spiritually blind. You know why Jesus healed blind eyes? Because he had compassion on the blind, but he also wanted to illustrate a higher level of healing that Jesus says, I cannot, I cannot only open up your natural eye, but I can open up your supernatural eye to see beyond what you see in the darkness. The light has come. Hallelujah. He said, I am the light. Hallelujah. So there were multiple times in scripture that Jesus delivered, talking about deliverance, multiple times in scripture where Jesus delivered men and women and children from, watch this, demonic strongholds and spiritual harassment. Multiple times. And you, you, you may need, you may be in need of deliverance if, you may be in need of spiritual deliverance if you may find yourself dealing with a demonic stronghold. And specifically, Scripture talks about strongholds. Strongholds are things that the enemy plants in your mind. They are, they are mental strongholds. It ain't some like, you know, barrack with, you know, uh, wood and, you know, uh, brick and stuff. That's I'm not stuff. That's not what scripture talking about. Like some spiritual thing that's just out there, ethereal thing that we pray. We gonna pray the stronghold. Down. We gonna pray that my name come down now in the name of Jesus. We're not just talking about some ethereal spiritual wall that's floating over the city of it. We talking about strongholds in the mind, mental strongholds in the mind that keep you mentally bound. And some, some of us, though we are filled with the Spirit of God, we have spiritual strongholds in the mind. Spiritual strongholds that have been passed down from our mother and our mother's mother and our great mother and our father and our great father. The scripture talks about generational curses and bondages being passed down to the fifth generation. So I, I look here. We got to get serious as a, as a spiritual family united, y'all. We got to get serious about saying, I, I'm not going to live in bondage to those strongholds. I'm not going to live into bondage to, to, to religious strongholds, sexual strongholds. Come on, somebody. So you may need deliverance if this is the litmus test. You may need deliverance in your life. You may also be experiencing spiritual harassment. 
where you have certain types of spirits, and we're going to get deeper into this. This is an introduction. Hallelujah. Okay. And, okay, I'm going to get into this deeper, but not, not today. But you may be being harassed by certain types of spirits that are assigned to you or your family. That's why we got to be fasting, y'all. Y'all need to be fasting as a church. We got to fast. Because when we start talking about this, the enemy doesn't like this. He don't like this. Okay, so you may need deliverance if you are encountering the following. Emotional problems. You find yourself dealing constantly with emotional problems. Mental problems. Speech problems. Sexual problems. Addictions. That can be any kind of addiction. If you find yourself constantly dealing with some type of addiction, there either is a stronghold in your life or there is some type of spiritual harassment going on in your life. Hallelujah. You may need deliverance if, watch this, physical infirmities. You're dealing with physical infirmities in your body. You may need deliverance. Let me say this. You may need deliverance if you are dealing with religious error. Religious error. Meaning you have perverted scripture. You've allowed yourself to be, uh, to, to be uh, manipulated with scripture. To believe you've allowed yourself to... Uh, to uh, put on a pedestal the traditions of man over the biblical word of God. You are in need of deliverance. Need, in the, need of deliverance. And so I'm almost certain that everybody in this room was following under one of them categories. <laughs> Jesus said, I did not come into the world to condemn the world, but through the world that the world might be sozo, sozo, that the world might be saved. So it's not about, look, oh, you pass say I got a demon. I'm not, look, here. if you're going to think like that, that's a stronghold. That's a stronghold. If you're going to say, I ain't got, I ain't got no spirit. What are you trying to say? I am simply telling you that you are in need, as a frail human being, you are in need of a supernatural God to do a miracle in your life. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you an evil person. I'm not saying you a witch. I'm not saying you a warlock. I ain't saying you got a Jezebel spirit. I'm not saying that. I am saying you are simply in need of a supernatural God to get some dirt off your shoulder. To free you from some stuff that's harassing you. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Hallelujah. Get that dirt off my shoulder. I gotta get that dirt off my shoulder. If you sitting there right now and you said pastor singing a Jay-Z song, you got a religious stronghold that you need deliverance from. I did that on purpose. Yeah, I did. I sure did. You need deliverance. You need deliverance. <laughs> Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. Hallelujah. Jesus, when Jesus was healing, when Jesus was delivering, actually, this young lady who was being possessed by a demon, uh, Jesus was healing. He referred to deliverance ministry. He referred to it as the children's bread. Somebody say the children's bread. The children's bread. Jesus, and you can go read it later. Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. You can go read that. I encourage you to go study. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus referred to the ministry of deliverance, getting the strongholds removed and the harassing spirits off of you. He referred to it as the children's bread. Meaning, this is God's provision for his children. This is God's provision for you. Hallelujah. Deliverance is not spooky. Deliverance is not some horror movie that y'all need to stop watching. 
Deliverance ministry ain't, you know, uh, you know, you come down here and I touch you and you start rolling and crawling and spitting white stuff out your mouth and screaming at me and you know my name and all that, okay? That stuff might happen, but we have authority over that stuff anyway. Deliverance ministry is the children's bread. To say, like, come here, come here, let me feed you. You need deliverance. You need healing. You need salvation. You need healing. You need deliver. You need the three-dimensional supernatural power of God at work in your life. Come here. Let me. Let me. Those words that your 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 family spoke over you all those years ago. Come here. You need deliverance from that because it's created a stronghold in your mind. When you were in sixth grade and your teacher said those words over you, that opened the door for you for a wound to be there. And, and, and a belief about yourself to be, come here, let me give you the children's bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you got into that conversation and that argument with your spouse and you opened up, you got offended. You opened yourself up for bitterness to take root and now you got a harassing spirit in your marriage that's bringing it down. You just simply need the children's bread. Don't make you a bad person. You just need the deliverance of God in your life. And so deliverance is not a spooky thing. De deliverance, watch this, is an expression of God's mercy and compassion. The Lord, the Lord, the Bible says Jesus wept. Why did he weep? Because he looked at the children of Israel. And the Bible says that they were lost without a sheep. That word lost in that text that I just read, seek and save that which is lost, is not in my notes. But that Greek word for lost is incredible. The Greek word for lost is means destructed, de de destroyed. Literally and figuratively destroyed. Jesus said, I came to seek and save that which is lost. That which is literally destroyed and figuratively destroyed. Who does the Bible say comes to kill, steal, and Destroy the enemy. Satan, the devil, comes to destroy you. But I have a person, I know somebody, who came to take that which is destroyed and restore it and redeem it. Seek and save it. Heal it. Deliver it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Deliverance is the blessing of being in covenant with God. If you are a child of God, you have a covenant with him through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have a covenant. That's why some of y'all need to get saved. No, I'm serious. Some of y'all need to pray to receive Christ right now, today. You need to pray to receive Christ right now. You know why? It's because when you get saved, you enter into a covenant with him. And when you enter into a covenant with him, you become a child of God and you have protection and provision under that covenant. It's a contract. Some of y'all need to sign the contract. Today. Today. Deliverance destroys what is of the devil. And it never destroys what is of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It destroys the works of the enemy. There are things. There are things in your life, in my life, that the enemy has intentionally set snares and traps down so that you walk across that field, you literally stepping on landmines. The enemy has been around for a very long time. And he has, through his different demonic spirits and forces, has the enemy has a plan for your life of destruction. And he set things up in place. To destroy your life. But what happens is God through his grace and his mercy. He removes those traps. And he sets you free when you get caught up in them. So deliverance is freedom from the works of Satan. Jesus said I have come to destroy the works of Satan. Deliverance tears down strongholds of the enemy and builds up the work of God. Hallelujah. Because there are not only traps set out, laid up for the enemy, but there are also blessings laid out along your way that God wants you to, hallelujah, step into. Hallelujah. Somebody better rejoice. 
God got some good things. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know. I know. I know what the enemy got planned. But I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Though your enemy has plans to harm you, I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. That's what deliverance does. Somebody say, I need deliverance. Hallelujah. Deliverance tears down. the. Deliverance is the bread for the children of God. Hallelujah. Deliverance. Deliverance is also, watch this, it is also part of the Great Commission. Deliverance is a part of the Great Commission. Watch this. Deliverance is a part of your responsibility as a Christian to not only take out, get the beam out of your own eye or the tree out of your own eye, but as a Christian, you are also called to administer deliverance to others. You see, you're not just listening to this sermon. You're not going to just show up or watch on uh, for the next 15 weeks just because you say, I need deliverance. You need to be trained in deliverance because this is what God has called you to do. I don't care if you're an accountant. I don't care if you work for the bank. I don't care if you uh, work for the school system. Uh, I, don't, I don't care if you deliver milk. Jesus, as a born-again believer, has called you to do the work of deliverance ministry. Let me read it for you. Luke, uh, uh, Mark chapter 16. Starting at verse 15, hallelujah, it says this. It says, Jesus said, go into all the world and proclaim. This is a command. It's not a choice. It's not, oh, I don't really feel like doing that, Jesus. No, you're going you gonna to do this. This is what you're called to do. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel, uh, the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Hallelujah. We've got three people about to get baptized. Thank God for three. Hallelujah. Hey, I feel the anointing on that. Three, hallelujah. Shadrach, Meshach, and a, and a nah, let me not say well, and a bad billy goat. No. Nah. <laughs> the fourth man will show up with you. All right, let me keep reading. It says, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs will, will accompany those who believe. Watch this. Those who believe shall be baptized. And watch this. The signs that follow those who actually believe in the faith. The, this is the fruit or the evidence of them believing. This is what it says. In my name, in the name of Jesus, they will watch. The first thing Jesus says is what? They will cast out demons. Oh man, this is going to be fun this week. Hallelujah. They will cast out demons. The first thing Jesus said for those who believe, they will cast out demons. They will administer the children's bread. They will administer deliverance. I know American uh, cinematography has done a phenomenal job at making us think that deliverance ministry is about a, a Catholic priest with a collar on and a cross and some little girl swinging her neck around with a tongue ah, and he throwing water at her with a big cross. That's what we have been communicated to or illustrated to in American cinematography. But deliverance is the children's bread. And you were called to break down strongholds to help deliver people from harassing spirits that are keeping them oppressed. It says they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents and though, and with their hands. And if they drink uh, any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's sozo. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Deliverance is a part of the Great Commission. Deliverance is your responsibility as a Christian. If I could have someone come up and minister with me through music. What I want to do, this is an introduction to this teaching series. What I wanted to do is help identify 
your need for deliverance. Many of you, if you are struggling emotionally, Jesus can help you with that. If you're, deal, if you're struggling in your uh, mental state, Jesus can help you with that. If you're struggling with physical sickness in your body, Jesus can help you with that. Yes, he can. If you're struggling with addiction, whether it's substance addiction, sexual addiction, what, whatever, food addiction, people approval addiction, Fear of man. I got to perform for people to like me. God can help you with that. So what I want to do in this moment, before we transition outside and we baptize these, two, these three young ladies, what I want to do is I want to pray for you that your heart would be open to receiving the deliverance ministry of Jesus Christ. That you would be in a posture to receive you know Jesus could have cast out more demons in his hometown but the problem was he couldn't cast out more demons of people and he couldn't physically heal more people because of the lack of faith that they had and not only that but there was a sense of familiarity that they had oh that's, that's Joseph and Mary child Go sit down, boy. You ain't doing that. He couldn't do and function and operate in the fullness of his ministry in his hometown because the people were so familiar with him. The title of this sermon series is called Protecting Holy Ground. Moses, take off your shoes for you are standing on holy ground. One of the biggest mistakes we make in the area of our deliverance and our healing is we treat things as common. Those things that should be holy. I want you to prepare yourself the next 15 weeks. I believe, seriously believe, that addictions are going to be broken off of people. I believe negative mindsets that have been passed down from one generation to another are going to be broke off some people. I believe there's going to be physical healing flow from this house in this place. Hallelujah. Some of y'all claiming it right now. Yeah, claim it. Don't, hey, don't, Raman Diabasa. I said, don't let familiarity set in. I said, come to the house with expectation in your spirit. I'm going to get my healing. If I have to press through the crowd, if I just have to touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to get my healing. Hallelujah. I'm going to get my soul so Save, healed, and delivered. There are things I'm believing for in the next 15 weeks for my own life. Hallelujah. So what I'm asking you to do is prepare your heart as a spiritual family. If some of y'all from out of town and y'all have your own church family, amen. You might want to go back and watch the live streams that we have later on after they've been viewed. Go to our YouTube channel and re-watch them and watch this teaching. We're going to identify certain spirits that have certain assignments in the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about soul ties getting delivered from ungodly soul ties there are such things as good godly soul ties did y'all know that we talk about soul ties like they all bad no some soul ties are good come here come here honey hallelujah hey come on come here come here this is a good soul tie this this the kind of soul tie that break generational curses off your life hallelujah come on pastor Carl come here come here brother Hallelujah. Hurry. Come on. Some of y'all need some good godly soul ties in your life. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Come lock arms with me. This is a good soul tie right here. This is a brother in the faith. Somebody I can call up when I'm struggling. Somebody can say, brother, I'm dealing with something, bro. I need your help. Come here, brother Zach. Hurry up. Run, run, brother. Hallelujah. I need some good godly soul tie. Uh, come on. Lock arms. Lock arms with Pastor Carr. Come on. It's a good godly soul tie. Hallelujah. These kind of soul ties help you tread upon the enemy. 
We're going to talk about soul ties and ungodly soul ties. Some soul ties you need to dismiss from your life. Some soul ties keep you harassed and oppressed and they reinforce demonic strongholds in your mind. Some, some, some soul ties keep you distracted from the plan and will and purposes of God. And so we're going to talk about strongholds. We're going we're to talk about deliverance. We're going to talk about administering deliverance. We're going to talk about identifying areas of our life that have been passed on to us from our parents. Some of it they ain't even know. They ain't even know. They just operating and function under the things that were passed on to them. And so we're going to talk about for that for the next 15 weeks. But I need you to posture your heart and be prepared to learn and grow as a spiritual family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Lady G, can you pray for us and close us? Yeah. Let's stand together, guys. So, Father, we thank you for this word, this rich word, and we are excited to encounter you today and over the next 15 weeks in this sozo way to be saved heal and deliver Jesus yeah we thank you for deliverance Lord we thank you that you have come to give us life and life more abundantly and we ask for it we receive it we we allow you into our hearts the deep dark secret places the places that we have not allowed you to touch yet we unlock them we open our hearts to you. We say, have your way, Lord. Save us, heal us, and deliver us, my Father. Save us, heal us, and deliver us. If there's anyone in the room right now, right now, and you know in your heart there are some places that are locked, You need to be saved in those places, healed. But right now, you need to be delivered in those places. Come on down here. We want to pray with you. The places that are dark. The places where you are broken. The places where, where you are afraid. Come on. Let's eat the children's bread. Let's eat the bread of deliverance. Let's come like humble children before our Father who is merciful and gracious, kind and bestowing love upon us. Let's eat the children's bread. Father, have mercy upon us. Father, we ask for your deliverance. Lord, we eat the children's bread. We ask that you touch and heal the most, the innermost place where we are hurting and broken, where we have been confused, where we have been ignorant. Lord, would you identify and touch? Would you heal us, deliver us, set us free? Yeah. Let that out. Eat from your father's table. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. from the Father's table. Wherever the prayer and prophecy team is, please come lay hands on these. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus.
Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We eat from the Father's table. Yeah, we eat from the Father's table, and it's good, and it's good, and it's good, and it's good, and it's good. Good. It's good bread. It's good bread. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and it's receive good, it's good, it's good. the provision of God. Open your it's mouth good, it's good, it's good. and eat from the table of God's goodness. Open your mouth. Hey. We eat from the Father's table. Father's table. We eat from the Father's table. We eat from the Father. We don't get the scraps. We eat from the Father's. We don't just get the crumbs, but we have a seat. We eat from the Father's table. Hallelujah, 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 
Y'all can talk after we do baptism. Let's move outside. We're going to have a sweet communion and fellowship out there.